Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Oh, let's do it. It's Growing in Grace, the podcast, podcast number 640. And uh, I'm Joel Brzezinski, along with Mike Kapler. And uh, Cap, something quietly passed us by, uh, just real quickly. Um, like I Ground said, this day. Well, that, but that was a few weeks ago. Yeah, I uh, guess it was. Actually, at the time of this recording, it was very recent. <laughs> but by the time <laughs> by the time this program is ready, it was a few weeks ago. And also, at the time this program is ready, what I'm about to say is yet to happen. But at the time of this that it's uploaded, it's already happened, and that is. That our uh, 13th year, we passed 13, we've been doing this podcast for 13 years now, and that would have been, uh, this is going to be uploaded on February 25th, and on February 10th, 2005, our very first podcast uh, was aired, and so uh, it's been 13 years now that we've been doing this, so happy to be starting our 14th year of the Growing in Grace podcast. Well, I'm glad you got that out, because for a minute there, I thought we were going to start talking about time travel. We're recording at this time. This hasn't happened yet. Now it's going to happen. And our next uh, guest will be Doctor Who. <laughs> is, From, he on, is he on first or second? <laughs> He's on sometime in the past, but at a future time. <laughs> um, 13 years. Gosh, you know, that, that has gone by fast. I didn't realize... Because I don't really stop to think about it. I didn't realize that it had been quite that long. It, it feels more like 12 to me, but that's just me. <laughs> feels like 13 in two weeks to me. <laughs> well, then that must be it. I'm a day off. So, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you ever think when we started, I can still remember doing our first podcast. I don't remember <laughs> all of them in between, but I, I remember those first ones. And um, boy, that felt awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's true. You and me had both were both in in radio, but you we didn't really do a whole lot together on the radio. You did the morning show with somebody else, and I was usually on by myself, mostly just naming songs and reading PSAs, and so we hadn't really done a whole. And, and but you and I had spent a lot of time just you know like when I'm heading out the door, talking about grace, talking about the Lord, talking about Jesus, and. And uh, but we had never really sat down and like had a conversation like what happens on this podcast, and so I I, I go back and I cringe sometimes when I listen to some of our earlier podcasts, <laughs> but but yet I think the message has pretty much stayed the same. Oh, you you would tell me that because I haven't gone back and listened to many of those old ones. I have not. Oh, it's been a while for me. But <laughs> and, and now that you tell me that you cringe, I, I don't think I want to <laughs> go back. But well, one thing you will probably agree with, though, no matter how uh, how different they may have sounded back then, our message really hasn't changed that much. I mean, uh, righteousness by faith. I mean, that was a big part of what we started out with. Uh, as the years went by, we started talking more about. As, as we grew in our understanding of, of God's infinite grace and, and unconditional love uh, through the gospel, we, we began to communicate other things about it, that uh, other dimensions to it, um, and we'll probably continue to do that um, as, as we started talking more about, you know, separating the old covenant from the new and uh, how, how the law should have no place in the life of a Christian. I mean, a whole bunch of different things, but and I think even sometimes when we go back and expound upon some of those same things, we, we see them from a different perspective and can, maybe can communicate them, you know, uh, with a, just just a different added dimension that maybe will help all of us begin to, to grow even further in, in our understanding of God's grace. Yeah, and I think over the years, too, social media, of course, has really taken off, and we've been able to interact with a lot of people even more so than in the, in the beginning of the when we first started the podcast and that sometimes spurs thoughts from you and me of things to talk about, things that we want to address, things that people are bringing up in the church today that we feel needs to be addressed or, or would be something good to talk about, helpful for people, whether it's addressing some sort of legalistic issue or just maybe somebody has had a question about God's grace, about 
uh, this hyper grace gospel or, you know, things like that. We, we've uh, been able to, you know, grow in our own understanding just through interacting with people. And then also we've been able to just, again, use some of those conversations online to spur what we talk about here. Absolutely. Well, we've been on a series of sorts, um, summarizing the scripture it's called. You can you can call it whatever you want. We're just trying to put some snapshots out there, if you will, some pictures to try to help us see the bigger picture of the Bible. I mean, the Bible can be somewhat of a, a, a complicated book because it's not really just one book, right? It's a whole bunch of different books, but it's compiled into what we call this book called the Bible. And so all we've been trying to do, even though we're taking some weeks to do it on our short weekly podcast, is to point out some key stopping points to, to help make the connection between some things that happened early on in those pages and some things that happened later on, like through Christ. And we were talking before we came on about how Jesus, that the, the real thread here from the first page of the Bible un, until the, the last page, the, the real thread, uh, the common thread is Jesus Christ. That's really, if we were to get done with this whole thing and we could put the picture up on the wall, that's what it would be, a picture of Jesus Christ, the, the living God. So that's what we're attempting to do here, kind of cross a river, jump on some stepping stones. Um, we, we talked about Adam, talked about uh, Abraham and Moses and the law, and uh, maybe another significant stopping point, and we're not saying that there aren't some other ones, but one that we're going to maybe just touch on here for a little bit is the Psalms and the Prophets. And we're not going to spend a lot of time sifting through a whole bunch of individual scriptures, but we want to maybe provoke some thought here and, and get you thinking about what are the Psalms and the Prophets and why are they in there? Why are they in that uh, in the Old Testament? And why is it sometimes referred back to in the New? So I'm going to kick back here now and let Joel teach us. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I will teach you from the Psalms and the prophets, because <laughs> that's what Jesus did when some people were <laughs> were it's asking about Psalms, what was right? going on. The Psalms and the prophets, the, the the ones that need to make the money, the, the prophets. <laughs> A lot of pastors and things. That, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, one of the play, the, the Psalms. In the Proverbs, uh, one thing that you had said before we started talking here, um, before we started recording, it had you know something to do with how the Psalms and the Proverbs. A lot of people will go to them for inspiration, for learning, you know, to, to learn things, and but it's it was much more than just learning precepts, and and much more than than learning principles for living. And in fact, now that we're in the new covenant era, uh, a lot of these things you can look in the Psalms and the in the Proverbs and they were perhaps foretelling what was going to happen. And uh, some of these things that you'll find in the Psalms, for example, I mean, we, we just got done talking about the law. We spent a few weeks on the law. And just one thing that has to do with that was, you know, something that David had said in Psalm 119, you know, uh, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And he goes on and says, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And somehow David had, under the law, had come up with the idea that if he would just meditate on God's commandments, meditate on the word, then he wouldn't sin against God. Well, how well did that work for him? Uh, Bathsheba, anybody? Um sending her husband to the front lines, anybody, and, and having him killed. Uh, and so we can, this is just one of the aspects that, that, and we'll look at a few other things here with the Psalms and the Proverbs, but one thing that we can see in there is that just because a Psalm says something, just because something was written in a Psalm doesn't mean that it's a principle for us to follow today. If there is something in there that happens to go along with life in Christ, with the new covenant, then sure, we can certainly look to that and gain some understanding from that. But something like this, what I just read from David, he didn't have this understanding that Paul had. Paul said, when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. He said he thought the commandment would bring life, but he found it only to bring death. David, under the old covenant, had not had that revelation, and of course, uh, Jesus Christ hadn't come yet. So some of these things are still old covenant things. 
and uh, looking ahead to the new covenant. And so I will swerve it back to you. That's an excellent point, Joel. Uh, Psalm 119, I think one of the longest psalms, if not the longest in, in, in the Bible. I, I had done some editing on my book where I had actually addressed this psalm just a little bit. I think I removed a lot of it from the final copy, but um, it, just a little further down from where you were reading, you know, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Now, who's this guy trying to kid? You know? <laughs> now, give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. And your point was well taken. Uh, and, and we covered some of this in past podcasts and even in recent weeks with our, our uh, the last few programs where we were talking about the law, where, where Paul was talking. The Apostle Paul was looking back now. He'd been he'd received this new gospel by revelation, right? taught by Jesus himself. And, you know, if, if Paul had been alive when David was alive, he'd have probably been saying the same things because Paul admitted mm -hmm. he thought that this law, these commandments, these statutes, that they were going to be given him life. And he found out the opposite was true. They brought him death. So you can read through these things and think, well, and, and a lot of times you'll hear, you know, preachers just always substitute the word law with the word word, the word of God. They think, well, if it says law, that just means the word of God. Well, it, you know, <laughs> there, there is the word of God involved here, but that doesn't always mean that it's um, a word that is meant for us today in, in a new and better covenant. And so when you're reading through the Psalms and even some of the Proverbs, um, you're going to find a whole bunch, more than you know, a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't apply to us today. I'm not saying all of it, and we want to take this further too. By the way, we we want to we want to point some things out. I think about why the Psalms are in the Word of God, why they're in the Bible, um, and we're going to use some New Testament scriptures to to talk about that. Even some things that Jesus said. So I, I don't want you to think that we're telling you to tear the pages out of the book. We would never suggest that about anything in the Word of God. But there are some things here for us to look through and learn from, and and realize that. When they were saying some of these things or writing some of these things, singing some of these things in the Psalms, um, it was from a, a totally different perspective than what we have now after the cross in, in the New Covenant. Joel, I'll let you wrap this up. Right, yeah, because uh, the, the thing that we point out very often, as we talked perhaps at the beginning of this program when we were talking about how this podcast itself has evolved, uh, you know, we've come to talk a lot about the differences between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And in the Psalms and in the Proverbs, you'll see various things that are very uh, obviously Old Covenant, although in the church today some people will still try to use them as principles. And then there are other things that we understand as being messianic or, or pointing to the Messiah or pointing ahead to the New Covenant. And so there are things like that that we'll talk about. So stay tuned for our uh, continuing series here summarizing the scripture as we'll talk more about that next week right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski heard online through various internet sources around the world each week to access hundreds of past programs visit graceroots.org share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace <laughs>